Hey everybody, today's May 3rd, 2018. I guess my last video, everybody was having problems with listening. I was trying something new on my computer, like I said I was going to do, and with everybody trying to, you know, tell me how to fix the volume, it still did not work. So I'm completely redoing this, okay? Um, and I hope it turns out better than the last one. So... I've been praying to God and the thing that happened to me was yesterday I was at my booth and I was listening to Christian music and out of the blue, out of the corner of my eye, I seen this white robe with a black belt and I thought it was an angel um, and I was contemplating and praying and praying. Well, I, I started watching a, a kid's show with my, with my children and in the middle of it, I just started praying, praying, praying. And when I asked God for confirmation, if it was truly from you or if it was an angel or what it was, let me know. And all of a sudden, um, the war trumpets blew on the, the movie. And I was like, wow, right? So I'm texting my sister Darla and she's all like, oh my gosh, you know, and you know, I text Nikki and, and Kim and um, just all kinds of people to try and get confirmation because I thought it was going crazy. And um, so then I ended up finishing out the movie and I was praying again. And I asked God once more for confirmation, and the war trumpet blew again. And I said, okay, this is real. The black is caused for mean and judgment, and the white is for the purity because Jesus Christ is coming, and he's going to judge the world. Well, um, I still needed more. Well, Darla and Della got in their spirit judgment and war. Okay, so then um, I, I ended up going to sleep. And I ended up having a dream in which I did not think was from God whatsoever. Um, but I ended up running it by, you know, Darla. And she gave me pretty good confirmation of it because I, since I'm using my phone, I'm unable to show you pictures. And I'm unable to upload them. Um, so you're just going to have to picture this. It was a full moon. And uh, she tried taking pictures of Jupiter. And it was a full moon, and underneath it had this squiggle, squiggly. And her and so many other watchmen were watching this at the same time, and they all got it was an umbilical cord, right? Well, what was funny about this is um, she was talking about eight um, and then three. And she was talking about how the eighth of this month is the last quarter of the moon and that you know it being um you know three may third may on the eighth day is the circumcision okay and um i don't know how she explained the rest of it but it was really cool the way she explained it um so anyways so then she uh her and i started talking and i was led I was like, oh my gosh, I got to tell you this dream that I had, okay, last night. And it was weird. It was literally, oops, writing down my notes here. This is what I saw in my dream right there, okay? There was a tube that almost was like toothpaste, only this was soft. And I kept pushing on it while my husband was on the bed. And he said, worms are going to come out. And I said, Though, no, they're not worms. That can't be. He goes, no, the worms. I pushed with all of my might, like, pushed. And out of the squiggly line popped this huge clear sack, and there was a baby in it. Okay? And I pushed until this baby came out. Um, and then I woke up. And I was telling her, oh, my gosh, that gives me confirmation. And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, it does, because that's, absolutely amazing um the white you know tube represents you know cleansing and purity because toothpaste brushes your teeth it cleans your mouth like all the impurities that's in it and the birth of the baby the umbilical cord that attaches to it that keeps the baby living but it's still inside the sack okay which means the baby's not completely born yet but it's going to be so i was led a few scriptures here of Psalms 83 okay there was other people telling me about how um, Amir you know over in Jerusalem and stuff yes I watch him he's got a heart for God for sure um, 
nobody has all the answers, okay? But I at first was led about Ezekiel 38, okay? How that war is going to play out, the Gog Magog about now, and then we go home. Well, in reality, it can't because that is a tribulation uh, war, and that's for another topic. I mean, I can show you many different scriptures on how that pertains to the middle of the tribulation, not at the beginning. So at the beginning is Psalms 83. Now, you've got to understand that the Bible is double fulfillment, okay? The end is from the beginning, the beginning is from the end. So everything in the Bible at one point or another has happened, but it's going to repeat itself because that's what history does. History repeats itself. Now, I'm going to read you this psalms 83 verse 4 they have said come and let let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of israel may be remembered no more i was watching a video yesterday um, about how netanyahu spoke in his hebrew language and stated that the covenant is going to be revealed there is going to be a covenant really really soon and he is not one to speak of the covenant he's not one to speak of this okay um so the rest of this you will get okay and how i got psalms 83 you know how darley got the numbers eight and three all right and how um what i seen the ninja angel i'm gonna call it is war okay war and judgment coming now we got Jeremiah eleven nineteen, but I was like a docile lamb brought to the slaughter. And then it's got a semicolon, which means there's two parts to this. Israel's getting brought up, okay? They are so innocent, yet they're not in their mind, okay? They, they are being brought up to be slaughtered, to be murdered, okay? Martyred, however you want to call it. Um, and then... You know, because there's going to be a peaceful time. They're going to be so innocent. And they're going to be like, yes, let's have peace. This is what we need. When in reality, it's completely against what God said. And what's going to happen through it? Well, you get the Antichrist. So then the second part says, And I did not know that they had devised schemes against me, saying, And let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be remembered no more. First off, good luck with that. Um, because Jesus' name is from the beginning of time to the end of time. They can do whatever they can to try and get rid of him, but Jesus is here to stay. Amen? All right, Jeremiah three fifteen and 16 says, And I will give you shepherds according to my heart, okay, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding, which would be considered the two witnesses. But right now, as we are living in our present day, we are the witnesses. We are the ones that... God has given us the heart um, to be his messengers, to bring the messages out, okay? And then in verse 16, it says, Then it shall come to pass, when you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days, says the Lord, that they will say no more. The ark of the covenant of the Lord, it shall not come to mind, nor shall they remember it, nor shall they visit it, nor shall it be made any more. Now I'm going to read this in the Strongs. Then it shall come to pass, when you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days says the lord that they will say no more the ark or the sense of gathering or or the the plucking the gathering okay of the covenant of the allegiance or the treaty the peace treaty um of the lord it sh it shall not consume okay um in the mind will shall not consume understanding and heart willingly right and then it says nor shall they remember nor shall they mark or keep it nor shall they visit it which is oversee avenge want look after or pay attention okay nor shall it be made what done which means appoint and bring forth and accomplish. What are they accomplishing? They're trying to accomplish the seven-year peace treaty, which is going to bring an end of all the suffering, quote-unquote, which is like a lamb to the slaughter. Lambs are innocent. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. So now we're going to sign this, and we're going to live happy ever after. Wrong, because it that's just dreaming right there. Now we got Psalms 83, 5. 
for they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you, okay? For they have deliberately took advice in unity, okay, with a resolution of wisdom, and they are cut off and destroyed from the friendship that became against them. Do you understand what's going to happen? That's in the midst of the seven years when the new world order comes into play. That is when the Antichrist steps up and says, time's up. We're done. I get my 42 months. You lose. So I'm going to rule here and I'm going to break the covenant. Sorry, you're out of luck. You okay? And then let's go down. It says this. Verse 15, so persecute and run after, chase, and pursue them with the hurricane or the whirlwind with them, with a tempest, with the hurricane. I am so sorry. I reread that sentence wrong. So persecute or run after and chase and pursue them with thy tempest, the hurricane and the whirlwind, okay, which is troubled rush upon and rage and make them afraid, make them dismayed and alarm with the Red Sea, which is the snatching away, which would be the rapture, that is going to wake them. That is a massive, massive major event that is going to wake the whole entire world. That is uh, this great revival that's going to happen. There's not going to be this great revival before Jesus returns. I do not believe that because of what biblical prophecy says there has to be 70 years of destruction and calamity and wars and desolations it's it's got to be for a full 70 years and it's not a full 70 years till when may 14th slash to may 21st um because of ir5 landing on that day okay so there's been a lot going on and um I just hope and pray this is encourages you and to understand that right now we do not need to be making videos uh, about other people, mocking them, bashing them, making fun of them, um, calling them a witch, calling them this, calling them that. You guys need to grow up and let that seed of Christ that's inside of you grow because what you're doing is making it die. Okay, if you do not have the love of Christ in you, it will show and it will show drastically. You as a watchman, as a Christian, have no authority to condemn someone. You have no authority to sit there and say that um, because of the way that you you believe or because of the way that Jesus Christ has showed you something that you're completely wrong and you're not a Christian and everything else. Okay, don't let pride get in the way. Don't be all puffed up thinking, oh, yes, you know, here you go. Here's a perfect example. Make muscles, not excuses, okay? So don't, you know, get all puffed up and then have an excuse about it. No, you live your life for Christ. Be humble. Come before him. Come before those people and bring them to Christ lovingly, okay? So uh, Jesus Christ is still returning. I do not know the day or hour, and he has and was silent to me, but I know today was a huge blessing for me, and we've had some storms, and I know you've been seeing it all over everywhere. I personally am a storm lover, but God speaks to me through these storms, and I know that judgment is coming. So be prepared. Ask Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, um, and, you know, give up this, this life and live for him. And you will see thy kingdom join us because nobody needs to be left behind you don't want to get left here in this world so um god bless you all and have a nice evening